In this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this fire truck cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. If you want to skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. So like I said in the beginning, I'm going to show you how to decorate this fire truck cake. And just to let you know, I'm starting with my cakes already baked, filled and iced, and my cakes are in the refrigerator. I always refrigerate all of my cakes. That way when I work on them, I take them out of the refrigerator and the icing is solid and I'm not gonna mess it up. I have videos showing you how I bake fill ice, how I make American buttercream, and everything will be linked in the description. And also any videos that I reference and all of the tools that I use will be linked in the description as well. And I will also let you know how much I charged for this cake. So let's get started. All right, I have some gray marshmallow fondant to get gray. You want a little bit of black and a tiny bit of yellow to cancel out the purple hue and the black. And I'm rolling out this gray pretty thin and I have this little impression mat here and I'm gonna lay it on top and just roll my rolling pin over it. And remove it from the mat and you can see how thin this is. It's pretty thin. Set that aside. I do have Tylos powder mixed into all of my fondant so it holds its shape. Now I want to make the topper. Don't just roll it out like that. You see how ugly the back is? What you have to do, get a smooth back and front. Find a smooth side, stretch it, press it in. Now I have a smooth top and a smooth bottom. And then roll this out pretty thick. This is going to be the numbered topper so you want the back to look nice. Same thing, I'm going to do the ladder. So I want a smooth front and a smooth back. And I'm going to roll this out, not super thick, but pretty thick and set that aside. And then I'm rolling this tan color out for the bricks. And this is even a little bit thinner and set that aside. Now I have a cutting board with a piece of non-skid pad underneath it, a wet paper towel that I could wipe my X-Acto knife on, a Dresden tool, a needle tool. I measured my number three that's going on top of the cake and made sure it was the correct size. Stick that down on top. Usually I use a Dresden tool. I'm not gonna do that when I have a pattern. So what I like to do is take a needle tool and I'm gonna keep wiping it off on that paper towel as the fondant starts to stick to it and I'm poking a little outline so I know where to cut. And I'm keeping my other hand down really close to where I'm poking because sometimes this lifts as you do it and you don't want it to lift. So look, now I have a dotted line that I can cut. So I'm cutting on the inside of that dotted line And anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm gonna take my tools, use my fingers, and smooth out all of my cuts. I'm gonna reline that on top of the picture and set that aside. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for the ladder. So let's place it down on that thicker gray fondant and trace the entire thing. And make sure you get the inside pieces as well. Peel that back. Now, this can be a pain in the butt. So I'm cutting out the inside pieces before I cut the outer pieces. So I'm starting on one side and then I'm bringing the point of the blade to the to the side. Do you see what I'm doing? <laughs> like it's hard to explain. I'm just making sure that I'm cutting a perfect rectangle in here. And then I, so I start with a shallow cut first and now I'm sticking the knife all the way down to the board and cutting it out. It's just so much easier if you get a shallow line first. That way you have a line to guide your knife where to go without really messing up the fondant. And this is so much easier if you have Tylos mixed into your fondant. I actually could have added a little bit more. It is a little soft, but I'm making it work. Now, that looks horrible. Let's flip it over and let's smooth it out. So I'm using my fingers and again, my tools, and I'm really pressing that fondant back down on itself just to make sure that it's not sticking out. I always start from the back and make sure that looks good and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. All right, now let's cut the rest of it out. So I'm doing a shallow cut first. I'm not st sticking the tip of the blade all the way down to the board. And then once I have the shallow cut, use that line as a guide and cut the rest of it out. All 
Anytime I have a thicker piece of fondant, I do a shallow cut and then I cut it out. It just doesn't mess up the fondant that way. So again, I flipped it over. I'm smoothing it from the back using my tools and then just flip it over again and smooth it from the front. And I want to realign it back on the picture, make sure it dries in the correct position. I want it to dry flat and let's set that aside. Now, I have a, a cardboard cake box lid here. Um, I just saved those so I can always put decorations on them. I have that little ribbon cutter. You can make it as wide as you want. And I cut a bunch of ribbons out. Now, I want to make it a little wider for the bricks. And when you cut these bricks, you uh, let me wipe that off because some of the fondant starts to stick to the discs and it gets super annoying. So, <laughs> make sure that the the little uh, strip is straight when you are cutting it. That way, your bricks will be straight on all sides and then I smooth the cuts every time. So let's do this in bulk. Let's cut a bunch of those little bricks and then smooth them all out and set that on the cake box lid. And let's set that aside. Now I need to paint the silver. Let's turn the ladder over onto a paper towel. I have some Rollcom Super Silver and a little container. I'm gonna get some of that powder in there. I will link everything I use below. Have some lemon extract and pour that in there and get a paintbrush and I'm going to paint a coat on the number. And then when I'm doing the ladder, look, I'm trying to get the inside of the ladder first. So then this is the back of the ladder as well. So get the inner pieces first and get the outer edges and then paint the back. And I'm gonna let that dry, do another coat on the three and then flip that over once it's dry and then paint the front. And now I have that thicker red fondant here and I'm going to flip the three over, get some water on the back and then flip that over and put that down on the red fondant. So that's gonna be our background for the number. And again, this is a thicker piece of fondant. So I'm doing a shallow cut, trying to get an even border the entire way around. Now, ugh, I hate number three, number six, number nine. <laughs> they get so annoying because they have these little inner pieces. So what I'm doing, I do the shallow cut and then do you see how I can easily mess this up if I don't take my time? So I'm just pushing my blade down. I'm trying to peel it away, trying not to mess up the fondant that I'm keeping. And I have to lift it up so I can get the blade like past uh, past the back. It, it, this may not make sense, but you see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to remove that small piece of fondant and flip it over and cut away and just try to smooth that out and make it look as nice as it can. This is why I have favorite numbers. I'd rather do like ones and sevens. They're so much easier. <laughs> but, and again, just trying to remove the fondant out of that little area without messing it up. And then so much easier cutting the rest of it out of fondant. And flip it over, smooth the back with my hands and my tools and flip it over and smooth it from the front. Now I have a, a skewer, I'm gonna twist, do not jab it in there. And you see, I can't stick it in the center, you're gonna be able to see it. So I have to shift it over to the right a little bit, stick it right in the center. This is why I rolled that red fondant out, out pretty thick so I can stick a skewer in there and I'm screwing it in there. Flip it over, make sure it's not popping out the back, make sure it's not popping out the front. And let's set those aside. All right, let me get the bottom tier out of the fridge and I'm marking with a mark at the front and I'm using my ruler to measure for the straws. Now this is all covered in my stacking tutorial. I go into complete detail how I stack cakes, but I wanna mark my straws, cut them and push them into the bottom tier, use a little bit of buttercream and my hands are clean whenever I handle these cakes. Do you see how I ice cakes that have dark icing on it? I do a thicker layer of white icing and then a thin layer of the dark icing. I have a video showing you how I do that. I will link that below. And then I'm going to stack that. Make sure it's level. Dowel the cake and fill in that hole. And all of this is covered in my stacking tutorial that will be linked in the description. Now I wanna clean the cake board because there's a lot of icing on there, so I'm just using a wet paper towel. And I have some piping gel, and I just wanna stick the bricks on. So I'm starting in the very front, and I'm gonna work my way back to the right side, and then go back to the front and work my way back to the left. That way, it's nice and even in the front, and the one in the back I had to trim so it would fit. Now let's do the next level. So you see on bricks how you have to do 
you have to stagger them basically so they look like bricks. You don't stick them just on top. And now I just want to do a few haphazard ones. And I keep getting piping gel on the back. I'm not just sticking them down. <laughs> There's piping gel on the back of all of these. And now I have my airbrush machine. I will find this and link it below. I love this thing. You control the pressure with the dial. I have some brown airbrush coloring. Don't pull the trigger too hard. Just pull it back slightly. And I'm blocking the bottom tier with that uh, paper towel so I don't get the color on the bottom tier. And I just want to outline the bricks in this color. So I'm starting at the bottom and then just keeping that pa uh, the paper towel there to block the bottom tier so I don't get airbrush coloring everywhere. And do you see how I'm just kind of going around the outside of all the bricks? just to get a little depth and make the cake look a little better. And now I'm turning the dial all the way down. You see how it kind of looks like a splatter effect? And then I'm just going to spray that on the bricks just to give it a little texture. And always clean out the airbrush with hot water. And let's put that back in the fridge. Now I have the name. I have videos showing you how I make names and I will link it below. I have some thin white fondant that has Tyler's powder in it and I'm using my Dresden tool to trace the entire name. Peel that back, you can see the lettering and you always want to cut the center pieces before you cut any of the lettering out. Just trust me, I've done it before. It's so much easier to cut the centers and then you cut the entire letter out. And again, anytime I cut anything out of fondant, I'm going to take my time and smooth my cuts. You probably won't see me do it every time, but I will do it every single time. And now I wanna airbrush the name. So I have some red and orange airbrush coloring, get a little bit in the gun, and I'm just going to do red down on the very tops of the letters. And I'm using my other hand to hold them down so they don't go spraying everywhere. You see that K is starting to go. <laughs> and then I'm gonna fill it with orange and do orange from the bottom just to give it a little more interest. I love my airbrush gun, this thing is awesome. And again, I have some gray fondant. I'm gonna roll that texture pad on top and paint it silver. I'm not gonna paint the whole thing silver because I don't need the whole thing. And get two coats on there. And then I'm going to get a little bit of water on the back of the letters and I'm going to put that onto the silver fondant and just make sure that it's straight so all the letters are lined up. And now I want to cut an even border. So this is thinner fondant, so I could put my knife all the way down to the cutting board and cut an even border the entire way around the name. Now, since I cut that out, the tops and the sides and the bottoms of the, those silver letters aren't silver, so I'm just carefully painting them silver. I don't know, I'm being a little extra, but that would bother me. <laughs> now I have the flames, I printed these out. All of the pictures that I'm using will be linked in the description. So I have thin white fondant, and I printed the, these out in three different sizes. So I'm tracing the white on the white and smoothing my cuts. And then trace the yellow onto the yellow, cut it out, smooth my cuts. and do the same thing for the orange and the red. Now I wanna airbrush, so I'm starting, I'm looking at the picture that I have right here, and I wanna airbrush the very tips of the white with yellow, and then the tips of the yellow with orange and the tips of the orange with red. And then with the red, I just airbrush the entire thing to deepen the color. Now I'm rolling the border for the bottom tier. So I have this black fondant, roll it out really long, cut a strip, cut a flat edge, get my cake out of the fridge and get some piping gel around the bottom and stick that down and wrap it around the bottom tier where it meets in the back, cut it and press the seam together. Then I like to use a palette knife just to press that all the way down to the board making sure that it's even. Now I wanna wrap the board with my little ribbon. So I'm getting a little glue around the perimeter and there's glue on the back of that ribbon where it's touching the cake board and I'm pressing that together. 
Now I wanna put the flames together, get a little bit of water behind it, and I'm just assembling these so they look like the picture. So I'm putting the yellow on the orange, the white on the yellow, you see how I'm doing it. And set those aside. Now I have some thin black fondant. You can see how thin it is, I couldn't hold it. <laughs> now I have these edible images and I printed them out the size that I wanted them to be. I have the video, I have tons of videos showing you how I use edible images and I will link them below and also where I get all of my edible image supplies. So I'm just cutting these out of the paper and then flip them over on a paper towel and I'm getting piping gel on the back all the way to the edges and then starting on one side so I don't get bubbles underneath and pressing that down onto the fondant. And now again, I wanna cut an even black border the entire way around the dog and the fire truck. And let's set those aside. Now I'm making the hose. So I'm rolling it out in the log, rolling it flat, and then I cut it with the ribbon cutter and then I'm cutting it in half with a pizza cutter because it was way too thick. So I think that looks good there. I took the cake out of the fridge and let's get some piping gel behind the back of it. Stick it to the cake. Where should I put this? That looks pretty good. I'm gonna get some icing behind it and stick it or you can use piping gel. And that one looks good there. So let's get some icing behind that and stick that to the cake. And now for the hose, I got some piping gel behind the back of the hose. That's why it's sticking to the cake. And I'm just kind of haphazardly sticking this on there and cut the end. And the ladder, I can see where it's going to touch the cake is that one ring. Is it a ring or a rung? It's a rung. Oh, whatever it is. <laughs> and then I push it against the cake and use my paintbrush to remove any excess icing. Why couldn't I think that of that word? And I have a thicker gray fondant and I'm going to cut a little circle out of there. Use my ball tool to deepen it. That way I could stick the hose in that end. And I'm going to make the little tip of the hose. Is it a sprout? Well, I don't know. What's it called? The tip of the hose, whatever, <laughs> where the water comes out. Paint the, both of those silver and then get a little piping gel in there so the hose can stick to it and stick that little piece together and stick the little nozzle, that's the word, <laughs> stick the nozzle there. And there we have a little hose. And the name, I had to let it dry so I have a six inch cake dummy because this is going on a six inch tier. So I dried it with a shape and got some piping gel behind it and stick that to the cake. Now I'm sticking a toothpick next to the skewer so that way it's not going to twist when I put it in the cake. <laughs> Get some piping gel underneath and push it down onto the top and see where the dog, the ear, and the paw are gonna to touch the three. So I'm just getting piping gel behind there and sticking that to the three, sticking his little foot down into the cake to help anchor him in. And where does this look good? Should I put that there? Should I put that there? I'll put it up top. So let me get a little toothpick in the bottom. I can do that because the fondant is a little thicker and stick that down. Now I wanna make the water. So I have white, I have light blue, I have dark blue, and I'm just breaking off a bunch of pieces and I'm going to marble that. So just get it all together and kind of knead it just a little bit, not too much. I want to keep a little bit of striping in there, roll it into a ball, roll it into a point and then curve it a little bit. Just give it a little bit of motion. And I'm going to do that a bunch of times in a bunch of different sizes. So I want some small drops. I want some big drops. And now let's put them on the cake. So I'm getting a little bit of piping gel behind each one and making it look like the water droplets are coming out of the hose. And get some on the flames as well. And there is the cake. So there you go. How adorable is this fire truck cake? And I just wanna let you guys know that that black tear that I showed in the video, I usually don't ice cakes with dark buttercream icing. However, when I do, I use that technique where I ice the cake with white icing and do a really thin layer of the dark icing on the outside. And I believe I said it in the video, but I have a tutorial showing you how I do that. And I will link that in the description. So these are five and seven inch tiers. And I think in the video I said it was a six inch tier because I dried the name on a six inch dummy. But I find if I use a six inch dummy for a five inch cake, it's basically the same shape and I don't have any issues with it. So yeah, if you want anything to dry with a curve, you want to make sure that you dry it on top of a styrofoam dummy 
or if you don't want it to dry out, you can put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it on the cake so it's not dry when you put it on there. And how much did I charge for this cake? This one was $300 and I had to remember <laughs> because I was about to make the fire truck out of fondant. I spent so much time working on this cake, probably decorating it, I think was about six hours. And look, I got it down to like, what, 18 minutes <laughs> with the magic of editing. But I, this is where you have to remember, like I always want to keep adding more and adding more to my cakes. And I just need to remember <laughs> sometimes when they're asking for a simpler design to stay in that realm, if you will. <laughs> so I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And you can keep in touch on socials and check out my website. Everything is listed in the description. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys and remember it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.